so many brushes to choose from. What brush do I need? Which one's right for what I want to do? We'll cover that and more right after this. Hi, I'm Tim Longwell with Longwell Art. Today we're going to talk a little bit about brushes. And brushes can be confusing because there's such a variety. You go to Walmart and you see one kind, you go to an art store and there's just literally walls of paint brushes. You don't know which one to get. And some of the things I'm going to point out today will actually surprise you on what you can use as a brush, depending on what type of paint you're using. One of the things we're going to do is basically we're going to start with talking about the basic types of brushes. First type of brush we're going to talk about is a round. And a round brush is just what it says. It's round. And the line it'll make, it allows you to make two types of lines. It allows you to make a fine line or you can press down fine line or press down and you make wide lines and thin lines and change it. Second type of brush that is most commonly seen and used is what's known as a flat brush. And that's just what it says, is it's just a flat brush to make a stroke with. And it can be used in a couple of different ways as well. You can either make a broad flat line, help you get enough paint on the brush. A broad flat line like that or you can use the edge and make a smaller line and you can even use the edge and just make an edge line like that and depending on what type of brush you use whether it's synthetic or this particular brush is natural here, it's going to affect the line you make. Now you take a synthetic bristle brush like this one, and you make the same lines, and they're going to be different because of the bristle types. The fine straight line, as you can see, is a lot cleaner, a lot clearer. Same with a straight line this way. Then your broad stroke is going to be more broad like that. Just like the, but it's smoother because of this type of bristle it is. The synthetic brushes are used to create a more smooth finished texture as opposed to a rough texture like a natural bristle brush is. Depending on the natural bristle brush of course. The, for oil painting, you use a hog bristle or you use synthetic to get the different types of tension that you want for brushes. The next type of brush is what's known as a filbert. If you'll notice, the edges are rounded here a little bit on both of these. This one's synthetic and this one's natural bristle. The difference with a filbert brush is again, it's also for smoothing and smoother edges. You can make a soft points like that. You can smooth an edge and smooth things out just like you do with a synthetic brush. One of the other things you can do that you do with a filbert brush is what we call scumbling. Where you're laying in a color you want, don't want it heavy but you don't want it light and it adds a different kind of texture to it. Then the last type of brush is a brush that 
everybody remembers Bob Ross was using to make his happy little trees. That's a fan brush. A fan brush is like a blending brush, actually, but it's called it because of its shape. That's exactly what it is. is it's a shaped like a fan. And you can use it to make like Bob Ross's little tree branches like he used to make for his pine trees. You can use it for blending. You can also use it to easily make curved shapes appear in your paintings. There's lots of different uses for the brush, the fan brush, and that's the, the last type that you'll normally see. Then there are derivatives of each of these types of brushes. By what I mean by derivatives is like you've got these little cheapy dollar brushes that you get at like Walmart or the hardware store or whatever. a little paint on them and they'll spread the paint depending on how heavy you get it on the brush. So they're good for applying large areas very cost effectively. Then you have a configuration of a flat brush both in synthetic and in this one happens to be for actually a house paint brush for oil paints and this one is for your acrylics and synthetic paints at home but they're an angle as you can see and they allow you to do different effects because you can use the very tip of them like this or you can use a broader set like that you can make plants or shrubs or whatever different effects with the paintbrush and they each have their different uses depending on what you're doing I use several different types of these brushes but that's a personal preference the only other kind of brush that you will run across are these real fine goats and lambs hair brushes and these are specifically for blending. You can use this type for watercolors for wetting the paper down but they're specifically designed to soften and blend your colors to take hard edges out like this hard edge here and smooth it out to where it looks more like this. So there's no harsh line separating what you're painting. And that's an effect you'll want on occasion. There are three types of situations where you'd use your brushes with your different paints. Your watercolor, your oil paints, and your acrylic paints. Now you can use the bristle hair brushes in acrylics and you can use synthetic brushes in acrylics but you don't want to use brushes that are designed for watercolors in acrylics because the although you can use them the acrylics will eat the brushes up and damage them quicker the acrylic paint is more abrasive than oil paints or watercolors and the softer hairs that you would normally paint with watercolor in those type of brushes you wouldn't want to use an acrylic mainly because it would just wear them out so fast that you'd be buying brushes constantly. Can you use those for it? Yes, you just the wear factor is very high. Now you can use the bristles like I said for acrylics and the synthetics but your animal hair, Kalinsky, um, squirrel, mongoose, hairs like that they're a little more expensive brush to acquire and you're not going to want to ruin those on acrylic paints 
it doesn't matter whether you're using acrylics, watercolors, or oils, each brush is going to give you the same effect in each of the types of paints. And that covers paints, paint brushes and types. And as we go along, we'll show you how to use the different types of brushes in different environments, whether it be watercolor, acrylics, or oil paints. Thanks for stopping by. If you like what you learned today, be sure and click the subscribe button. Check out the videos over here to get ideas and tips and hints on painting and creativity. And we'll catch you next time on Create for Contentment. Until then, you be sure and have fun.